you very much. Um, so, thank you naturally uh, for you for coming, and I'm very pleased to attend at last this festival because I was not able to attend the previous one. I was abroad, and now I can share with you some ideas and some principles. So, basic principle for sharing economics. That is, uh, we all have heard of the increasing role of sharing economy, not only in society, but also in uh, the famous GAFA that are the leading part of capitalism. So, I want to try I have a problem with my, uh, the thing doesn't work at all, uh, yes, sorry. Uh, so, including, I'm teaching in various places, and I am uh, running a review which is called Multitude, and last issue is uh, about, is about uh, automation and robots and in employment and things like that, and the future of salary, wage, labor. Uh, I'm going to speak about sharing economic commons of knowledge and the battles of new enclosures. That means this is not a gentle field where everyone loves everyone. It's a ferocious uh, battle on intellectual property, property, the form in which labor, depend, dependent labor is performed, and what is at stake is the profit and the stock exchange performance of the biggest firms in the world. Second, I will say something about uh, why sharing economics and platforms play such an important role. And finally, uh, we'll try to, uh, I will set a set of principle. I will speak to you of terra nullius principle that is open factory and free factory. The difference between open source and free um, software or copyleft principle. Uh, getting after to uh, revisiting intellectual property right and, and property right, like tutoring appropriation, learning and care, versus the enforcement of the old bundles of property right. And finally, I will close by some micro and macro uh, principle for a sustainable model of uh, uh, let's say, uh, commons and uh, sharing economy. The first impression is that it's very uncertain. One day you learn some victory for the sharing economy. The day after you understand that uh, the old economy has some resilience and it comes to re-enclose the thing that we we, it took really years and years for us to conquer. Uh, precarious net of what is called cognitariat, like Marx had spoken of proletariat, clique workers and uh, uh, servants of data warehouse or data banks, um, learning machines, all these things is in the landscape and that proved that Everything is not uh, really splendid in the, in the realm of uh, commons, the new commons of sharing economy. Uh, but for maybe most, uh, the most important thing is there is really uh, some gap in coherences between public policy and spontaneous practice of the people on the one hand, and uh, non-commercial 
sector of sharing economies and the new growing, fast growing sector of economy. That is, someone has spoken of a huberization of economy and sharing economy. So we must say something. Uh, let me introduce you a, a sort of general map of what is going on now. To the right of the things, you see two principles that are really opposed. That is patentization of everything. It's what you heard uh, in, let's say, all the big companies. Let's enforce property rights. Let's patent living things. Let's patent uh, traditional knowledge of the people, of the uh, aboriginous people. Uh, let's uh, make some biopiracy. And on the opposite, you have new principle of appropriation. Because it is not true to say that sharing economy is only a free space for free enterprise and free profit and no protection for workers and the others. What, where does this come from? It comes from democratization of education, wealth of networks, collective intelligence. Through what? Through digital technology that for the first time uh, enables us to trace human in interactivity, what I will call pollination. And naturally, this creates a big crisis in intellectual property right, in uh, brand authors, uh, uh, copyrights, in patents. And the opposite to, let's say, a further enforcement a more severe enforcement of IPR is coming from, let's say, collaborative economy, uh, free software like GPL license, but also peer-to-peer -peer license. And this creates new expectancies and new uh, hopes for new kind of regulation. Uh, what is why uh, sharing economy plays a big role? Uh, the big role is uh, sticks to one principle. I've called this pollination. If you look to the bees, the bees have an output value. It's one billion dollars per year in the world. That is honey. Wax is sold on the markets, and it provides one billion dollars. And now, ask yourself, but what are doing the bees? And anyone knows that the bees are doing something much more important than the honey and the wax. They are pollinating nature, pollinating uh, uh, nature um, preserved, but also they are pollinating crops, agricultural. That makes, if you calculate the economic wage of uh, the, if you ca calculate, you find at least with the, let's say, the most minimizing evaluation of uh, pollination, you will say it's $153 billion per year. And I did other calculus, and it makes approximately for the merchant economy that is agricultural, it makes $790 billion of dollars per year. And if you include nature preserved, you rapidly reach 5,000. So you can say that the sphere of pollination, you should understand human activities, human interaction, worth between 153 times 
or 5,000 times the economic value of their output. The income of the bees represents an enormous thing. And what is cognitive capitalism? Cognitive capitalism is a capitalism that has understood this fact through the use of digital revolution and digital device. Google, Amazon, Facebook, blah, blah, whatever they are. They understood that they were able to catch one ten percent of these in human interaction. And one ten percent of, let's say, five thousand billions of dollars, or even one hundred and fifty three, you understand that it is much, much more than the total of the classical economy. And this change as is providing now all the principal features of the change. So cognitive capitalism is a form of accumulation of material means and organization device, including organization of work, the form of dependent work, uh, human culture, language, and so, that uh, are able to capture uh, through web 2.0 platform, the interaction of the multitudes. Uh, pollination, you see, now we know that po uh, bees are disappearing. And the, dis the disappearing of the bees is exactly what threatens the sharing economies if predatory attitude towards these fears of the new commons, digital commons, uh, uh, prevails. So we have to fight naturally against this uh, lurid uh, uh, future for sharing economies. Uh, naturally, sharing economy poses a big problem to entrepreneur, to market-friendly people, because it is not clear who owns what. You know? And that's terrible. Who owns what means what right have I as an entrepreneur to sell something on the market and say, this is all mine. I have paid for it. I make profit. And I'm legitimate to use this as I want. Whereas Let's say, uh, naturally, you can find all these problems for property inside many, many fields. Knowledge, uh, material work transformed by digital means. And naturally, uh, the, uh, this is increasing because at the same time, the importance of public domain, of open source resources, has increased too. And uh, there we have our problems is what rules for this open domain? What rules for the open data? What rules for people that are sharing knowledge? You know, can they be the only owners, like the ancient system, will they invent new forms? And there is, unfortunately, we have had a great principle. We, Europeans, have had a great principle, which is the mother of all the battles of industrial capitalism. This principle was the terra nullius principle. Terra nullius principle meant for Pizarro and various conquering people that have conquered the, the earth, the whole earth, was the Amerindians, the aborigines, the other civilization didn't have clear property rights. So they were not the owners of the land. 
and the king and after the colons were right to appropriate themselves of these land, natural resources, and so on. And this terra nullius was the ground upon which the, <clears throat> the post-colonial uh, civilization refused, European civilization refused any, any reparation to the rub of primitive accumulation of many, many uh, people in the world. This is why many, uh, precisely, Amerindians and start all over the world, started people started to defend themselves and ask for the destruction of this principle. And this has happened. That is, the Supreme Court of Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Brazil, United States, Canada, recognized that it was a false idea, the terra nullius principle. And I infer from that that we should recognize that the open source principle is also a false principle. That is to say, you cannot use of nature, you cannot use of sharing economies, the new digital commons, saying any kind of people can use it without rule, without retribution. Retribution to those who worked to do this, retribution to the people that really are creating these things day after day by interacting themselves. So we've got to get rid of this post-colonial principle. So I'm coming to an end because it's... Uh, no, it doesn't... Uh, yes. So what is the rule we should propose? Restore, protect, extend all commons. This is true for various variety of plants that are totally appropriate by Syngenta, Mon Monsanto, and others, destroying the commons of the peasants. Create new commons of digital knowledge, platforms, data warehouse. By the way, in France, it has been adopted a very dangerous law about data. That is, anyone who invests in data formatting, warehouse, and so on, will get a 20 years property on it, exclusivity, and will be able to sell it to others, users, whereas it doesn't pay anything to those who provide precisely the contents of this data. Second, a uh, third, protecting and tutoring free software, peer-to-peer, listens, sharing economies. This is our principle that can be, and I will end my things in saying, we are in a flu, I don't know if you know FUSI mathematics. FUSI mathematics are, uh, you recognize the principle of the third include. You don't say there is one solution, another solution, and no in between or no third quid. So, I think what is very important, see, these public or commons, new commons, are neither market, neither states. The states and the market, which are the two ordinary systems we have to treat economic resources, are not sufficient. We must add a third one. Third one can be decided by communities, by sharing community and so on. Second, yes, the network, uh, the networks should be neither private, neither public. It's new digital common and it should be proclaimed as common, as such. Third, work is neither activity, neither an employment. It's activity of pollination. The most valuable work is activity of pollination. It's the most productive, even for the market. So it should be recognized and 
let say put on the top of the things. And this could solve some problems. Retribution is neither revenue from employment in the market, neither redistributed income, pollination or uh, uh, unconditional basic income or revenue of what I call sharing ship is not a sort of uh, uh, redistribution of value created elsewhere. It is a true remuneration of pollination activity of people. And to finance this, you should change, as it had been said in the previous session, you should change completely taxation principle instead of taxing stocks between two fluxes, you should tax the movement. Bees are producing uh, wealth of networks by mobility. We should encourage sharing mobility and we should tax the big GAFA on the numbers of clicks, uh, of the clicker, that is on the true basis of their uh, uh, health and the true basis of their profit. Thank you. Well, thank you.